Kids will love gobbling up grounders in this game we call alligator traps. Line up your team and stand 10 feet away. The first player in line gets into a set stance with knees bent and hips low. Whether you're playing softball or baseball, the game is the same. Here's how it looks. Roll a ground ball to the first fielder. When the ball arrives, they must properly receive it with both hands, like an alligator eating its dinner, before throwing it back to you. Good job! Roll three grounders to every player before they move to the back of the line. Ask players to keep track of how many grounders they successfully field each turn, then challenge them to catch even more next time. Remember, the better they can see the ball, the less likely it is to scoot past them. So remind them to keep their eyes on the ball all the way into their glove, just like that. Everybody in, everybody in. Hey, good job. One, two, three, Mojo! Every runner is in scoring position in this game called Base Path Blitz. Here we go, here we go. Line up your team behind home plate. You stand in foul territory near one of the base paths. If you have a second coach, you can cover both. Baseball and softball players use this game to prepare for any base running scenario that comes their way. Here's how it looks. One player at a time steps into the batter's box and gets into their stance, but without a bat. Go! On your call, they pretend to swing and take off running. When they approach first, they must listen or look to you. There you go, right here, right here. As you tell them to either run through the bag, turn and look. Take a look. Here you go, come back, come back, come back, come back. Or round the bag and go to second. Two, go two, go two, go two. When approaching second, they look to you again to tell them whether to stay at second, continue to third and stay there. Up on the base, up on the base right here. Or round third for home and don't look back. Go, 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 let's go. Give players a point every time they touch the plate. They'll love keeping track of their score as they stack up runs. Remind them that, just like in the actual game, they don't need to see the ball to decide whether to go or stay. That's up to you, coach. They just have to listen up and run hard. Let's go! Let's go! Yeah! Batters turn ground balls and pop-ups into line drives in this game we call Tea Time. Divide the group into pairs lined up outside the batting cage. Within each pair, name a hitter and a feeder. The first team steps up to the tee in the cage with their helmets on. Whether you're playing softball or baseball, the game is the same. After the feeder places a ball on the tee and steps away, the hitter takes a controlled level swing, hitting a line drive right through the box. Atta boy. After each swing, the feeder places another ball on the tee, always making sure to stay a safe distance away when the hitter is up to bat. Boom, I'll take that. Anything on the ground, on the line. When the bucket is empty, both players retrieve all the balls before switching positions. More experienced players might ask why they're not facing live pitching. Remind them that even major leaguers make time for some tee work. Work on your balance, on your finish, right there. It's the best way to refine their swing without the pressure of pitch recognition and selection they can focus on proper form and swing away. That a boy, nice swing right there. Very nice, good finish. Players learn to read and field grounders in this game we call Lazy Catch. Divide your team into groups of five. You grab a ball and stand 15 feet away from the first player in line. Whether you're playing softball or baseball, this game is the same. Here's how it looks. All five players get down on both knees without resting on their heels. They place the fingertips of their gloves on the ground as you roll a grounder to them one at a time. Once they field it, players must throw the ball back to you, all without standing up or fully sitting down. Work your way down the line, then make your way back, this time rolling backhanded grounders. You wanna see it go into the glove? Close and lift. All right, here we go. This is what it's called a backhand. Give players a point every time they cleanly field the ball. Then challenge them to beat their score in the next round. Some players may copy their favorite pros and field grounders with one hand. 
Remind them that the only way to make it to the show is by using both hands and snapping down on the ball like an alligator for four-handed catches and scooping the ball on plays to their backhand. Like that. Great job. Ball Joe! Players improve their reaction time in this game we call Belly Up. Line up your team and tell everyone to lie down on their bellies. You stand about 20 feet away with a ball. Whether you're playing with softballs or baseballs, the game is the same. Here's how it looks. Roll the ball towards the first player in line. Ready, up! They immediately pop up, charge the ball, field it, and throw it back to you. Work your way down the line and be sure to mix in a few pop-ups just to keep them on the toes of their cleats. Up! Oh, yeah! Dre, you got it! Oh, ho, ho! And the roll! Some players may jump the gun and stand before you call up. Not so fast. No, not yet. I got to see up, buddy. Here we go. Ready? Up! Remind them to wait for the signal. After all, in the actual game, the first step to fielding the ball is seeing where it's going. Everybody in! Yay! M-O-J-O! M-O-J-O! Players develop hand-eye coordination skills in this game we call Up Top, Down Low. Divide players into pairs spaced about 10 feet apart and give each pair a ball. Whether you're playing softball or baseball, the game is the same. Be ready to catch, be ready to catch. Here's how it looks. Ready, go! On your call, players begin throwing underhanded pop-ups to their partners, who must catch them with their gloves in a high-five position. After each player gets 10 turns, pairs begin throwing low balls to their partners, who must catch it with their gloves turned in a low five position. Good, good job, good eye. Encourage players to remember the total number of catches they make, then challenge them to beat their score in the next round. If you've ever wondered how major leaguers make catching fly balls look so easy, it's because of games like this. Practice enough, and soon every pop-up will be a can of corn. Fielders learn to erase runners from the bases in this game we call Force Out, Tag Out. Divide the group into pairs of one runner and one fielder with a glove and a ball. Spread the pairs out across the base pads, standing about 10 feet apart. Whether you're playing with softballs or baseballs, this game looks exactly the same. All right, here we go. Once they're set, call out one of two commands. Working on Tag Out, ready, go. On Tag Out, the player with the ball must try to tag their partner. Ready, go, tag him out, tag! On force out, the fielder must run to a bag and tag it with their foot before the runner gets there. Working on force out, go to your base, go to base, tag the base, tag the base. Players get a point each time they tag a base or another player. So ask them to keep track of their score. After about 60 seconds, call stop and have the runners and fielders switch positions. Come on back, jog it back. This is a potentially confusing concept, and younger players may struggle to understand the difference between the two types of outs. Think of it this way. On the playground, tag means you're it. On the diamond, tag means you're out. Let's go, Mojo! Get that ball off my yard. This is Cleanup Crew. Use cones to create two adjoining rectangles, one zone in the infield dirt and the other in the outfield grass. Then place an equal number of practice balls in each. Finally, divide your group in half, with one team assigned to each zone. Here's how it looks. Ready, set, go! On your call, both teams try to clear all the balls out of their area. The only way to do that is to throw them overhanded into the other team's area. Three. After a minute, call time. One, freeze! Freeze, freeze, freeze! Drop the Whichever team has fewer balls in their area is the winner. 15, 19, you guys won! Young players especially will love the chaos that Cleanup Crew creates, but it's actually a low-pressure way for them to get comfortable throwing overhand. Don't worry about using proper form just yet, just as long as the ball makes it to the other side. One, two, three! Players alternate catching barehanded grounders and pop-ups in this game we call Grab Bag. Place two cones 10 feet apart in the outfield, then divide the team in half and line up each group behind a cone. You stand about 15 feet in front of and between the two cones, 
with a bucket of practice balls. If you have help, you can send one coach to each line with their own bucket. Whether you're playing softball or baseball, the game is the same. All right, here we go. The first players in each line step up and get in to ready position. Ready! You ready? Go. Let's do this. You start sending grounders to one and pop-ups to the other. The players field each throw using the correct technique. They then throw the ball back to you and move to the end of the other line. All right, you're going to switch it up. We're going to either a ground ball or a fly ball. In the second round, throw a mix of pop-ups and grounders to each line so the players stay on their toes. Always stay in your ready position because you never know if it's a pop-up grounder. Always strong, ready, right here. Give players a point every time they cleanly field the ball. Then challenge them to beat their score in the next round. Because the balls are made of foam, players will be tempted to catch them with one hand. Reinforce that they should always use both hands while fielding grounders and fly balls. In the actual game, that's the best way to stay on the field and off the blooper reel. One, two, three, mojo! Beginners get comfortable on the field in this low-stakes, high-fun scrimmage that we call Blast Ball. Divide your team in half, with one group up at bat and the other in the field, without gloves. You'll pitch for both teams, but instead of a metal bat, you'll use a plastic one. And instead of a softball or baseball, you'll use a practice ball. Here's how it looks. The two groups scrimmage, like any softball or baseball game, with a few changes. First, no strikeouts. Let each hitter keep swinging until they make contact. Second, an inning ends only when every hitter has had a chance to bat. And lastly, if a ball lands in the outfield grass, it's a home run. Whichever team has the most runs after three innings is named Blast Ball World Champions. Newbies will love the chance to compete, and the larger ball helps them feel safe while familiarizing themselves with the rules of the game. Blast Ball may look a little different than a typical day at the ballpark, but make no mistake, crossing home is just as sweet.